in After Hours on Friday, everything changed for Tesla stock. The concept theory for Tesla's future being the robo-taxi may no longer be a concept or a theory or a project. It could actually be something that is put into play in the not so distant future. Tesla, specifically Elon, announced that Tesla was going to have this Rubble Taxi event on August 8th. For a plethora of reasons, this is positive. The long-term potential of RoboTaxi is beyond your wildest imaginations. Like the RoboTaxi network will be the biggest transformation to society that you likely see in your lifetime. As Elon Musk said, and I think I'll always famously uh, paraphrase this, it will be crazy to people that you drew, drove cars when you were drunk and exhausted and the kids are screaming in the back. That's going to be a crazy concept. Point is, things changed for the better. Now, I explained this and went into depth in the last video. Like, I literally think this is the moment 20 years from now, you're going to say, it was in my face. I should have bought as many shares of Tesla as possible. I should have invested in Tesla. As a lot of people say today... Dang, the iPhone back in 2007, that was the time I should have taken notice of the trend that was at place and invested in Apple and just bought and hold. I firmly believe this is the 2007 moment for Tesla, meaning 20 years from now, you're going to say this was the moment. This was the obvious moment in which I should have owned as many shares of Tesla as I possibly could. Nonetheless, here in this video... We're not going to focus on that aspect too much. Yes, we'll talk about that. I did a video on that, the last video that came out at 4 p.m. Check that out if you guys have not done so already. I think that could be the most important video that has ever been put out here on this channel. I would say this is maybe the second most important video put out on the channel. Here in this video, we will discuss what I think is coming next for Tesla stock. You're in a very interesting moment right now. OK, you have a lot of short positions. You have what could be really good news coming this week. We have earnings on April 23rd. So what do I think Tesla stock is going to do? I think you guys will find a lot of value out of this video. The bears are probably going to hate this one. The bulls are probably going to love this one. There's a lot more positive things to say than negative things to say. And if that changes, well, I think. The first chance of that is on August 23rd, unless we get some kind of price cut out of nowhere, which looks at this point pretty unlikely. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section and let's get started. By the way, I would tell you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because Emerson told you to, but that baby is off napping and no way. In hell, am I waking him up right now? But first, before we get into what's coming next for Tesla stock, I want to share with you some things that Elon Musk just said on X. He actually commented to this post from Sven on X um, from back on August 27th. 2023. Sven says Tesla already won the race to autonomy and nobody knows it. Here's why. Based on current information, uh, talks from, you know, Andre Karpathy, other individuals. He says, I came up to the following simplified steps where DC data center OTA over the air fleet equals Tesla fleet equals NN neural net. Number one, start with training data set. Number two, train neural nets based on data set. Number one, OTA deploy uh, neural net to fleet and the fleet then collects videos, sends clips back to DC. Uh, Outlet clips, add clips to current training data set, and then restart. He says all components, fleet data, data center, and over the air, all in-house. Highly automated process so far. Setup will be improved. Size of training data set increased of fleet by 50% per year. More large, clean, and diverse data sets and training compute speed with H100s and Dojo. He says, if you see it as a race to level five autonomy, following questions come into mind, especially with regard to competition. What size is the fleet? How big is the size of the fleet? How easy slash fast is access to the fleet? And to what degree is the whole slash loop process automated? 
Elon Musk just said pretty much. It has been staggeringly difficult to make generalized self-driving work, requiring all that you describe above and more. The investment in training compute, gigantic data pipelines, and vast video storage will be well over $10 billion cumulatively this year. Yeah, I, I don't think legacy OE, OEMs at all can even try to compete with that. They, they just can't, okay? When you actually even put it into dollar amounts, let alone collecting data, there's no way they can compete a Ford or a GM with $10 billion of R&D spend unless they let their stocks go through the floor because they're going to be losing a lot of money at that point. Okay, he goes on to say, but that is nothing compared to the quarter trillion dollars in cars on the road with Tesla designed AI inference computers being trained by their drivers. Yeah, that's the biggest, I guess, step is putting all of these computers that are, you know, AI computers essentially into cars and get them driving out on the roads. That's the true problem. Ford and GM, they would have to basically give away FSD or their equivalent of FSD to every vehicle they sell for free just to get the data required to try to make a fully autonomous platform. And then at that point, good luck trying to take away your free FSD software that GM and Ford gave to their customers. It's inevitable. They will partner with Tesla for FSD technology. It's only a matter of time, and I think that's really what Elon is hinting at here. Elon also wrote this on X and really shared his master plan from 2016. He writes, I wrote this eight years ago, and I think he's trying to somewhat remind people of what was actually said here. Now, I'm going to read some of this for you guys, but I, because I don't think a lot of you have probably read this. Again, it's from... 2016 and i want to read uh, specifically the parts about autonomous vehicles there's one part in particular that really stands out to me he says the first master plan that i wrote 10 years ago is now in the final stages of completion it wasn't all that complicated and basically consisted of number one create a low volume car which would necessarily be expensive. Use that money to develop a medium volume car at a lower price. Use that money to create an affordable high volume car and provide solar power. No kidding. That has literally been on our website for 10 years. Now, he, he goes on to basically talk about uh, the car market and um, essentially him almost going bankrupt and Tesla and, and the fact that Ford and Tesla are the only car companies that have not uh, went bankrupt. He's talking about PayPal here, all kinds of different things from, from his, his start. And I imagine a lot of you guys um, already know that. So for the time sake of this video, we are going to uh, kind of skip down to integrate energy generation and storage. You know, I was actually talking with my mom last night, um, and, and she recently went on a cruise back in November and she was saying like all she's seen was Tesla's out there and foreign cars, but like not a lot of Ford and, and, and GMs. And I was I was explaining to her right now with Tesla stock because she's not invested. She doesn't even have a 401k or anything like that. Uh, I, I was explaining to her usually in the markets, you know, you've heard the term high risk, high reward right now. Tesla's in my opinion, low risk, high reward. You usually can't get a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 X investing in a company without taking a lot of risk. And that's the that's what I really like about Tesla right now. I don't want to risk all of the money I'm putting in Tesla, right? And you're not going to lose all the money you're investing in Tesla. The odds of Tesla going bankrupt at this point, <laughs> don't even get me started. They're quantifiably tiny, okay? Kind of like Apple going bankrupt or Microsoft is just really they're too too established at this point. And even Tesla losing another 50 percent from here, highly unlikely, in my personal opinion, especially given the news that we just got. But I was explaining that to her. And then we got into the concept of renewable energy and what Elon has said in regards to renewable energy and um. So solar, right? As Elon has said, just a small corner of Nevada could power 
the whole U.S., right, for days over again. That's that's how strong the sun is. But you need batteries to supply that. And as, as Ilana said recently, the battery demands for stationary batteries is basically unlimited. And if we really are running out of oil in the next 50 years, in our lifetimes, you are going to see Tesla's energy generation and storage business explode, OK, and uh, I think I got her a little interested in uh, Tesla stock, long story short, but not even just fully autonomous vehicles, even the energy business long term is going to be massive. OK, completely massive. Now, uh, let's skip down because I kind of uh, uh, just shared with you a bulk of uh, what he says there. Autonomy. As the technology matures, all Tesla vehicles will have the hardware necessary to be fully self-driving with fail operational capacity, meaning that any given system in the car could break and your car will still drive itself safely. It is important to emphasize that refinement and validation of the software will take much longer than putting in place the cameras, radar, sonar, and computing hardware. Even once the software is highly refined and far better than the average human driver, there will still be a significant time gap, varying widely by jurisdiction. Before true self-driving is approved by regulators, we expect the worldwide regulatory approval will require something on the order of 6 billion miles, in parentheses, 10 billion kilometers, of current fleet learning is happening at over 3 million miles per day. Uh, let me tell you, Tesla just passed 6 billion miles of driving data and it's basically vertical. Just back in September of 2023, there was only about 170 million miles driven on FSD. Today, you just crossed over 1 billion and it's literally straight up. And I think this all was Elon's master plan. Okay. It's genius, right? When you read through to what Elon is doing, they develop the software with the miles that they have, you know, driven, right? Once we got the free trial, Tesla was at like 800 million miles, 600 million miles driven. The so the software got really good with the neural nets changing from a little bit of code to all neural nets. The software has gotten a lot better, FSD V12 and the iterations after that. So what has Tesla done? They've opened it up to all Teslas out there on the streets in North America. They are going to collect a lot of miles quickly you're talking probably another billion or two miles just in this month of free trial let alone anyone that you know signs up for that and elon musk just said yesterday on x that it's not going to be too long before you have 10 billion miles of of training data for tesla and that's when things get you know pretty juicy for full self-driving, considering Tesla is no longer training compute constrained. Elon goes on to say that Tesla deployed full self-driving early. It just forgetting about bad press or putting aside fears of bad press um, because of the death rate in automobiles. It was reported that there's one death for every 89 million miles driven on the road. So Tesla really seen like, hey, FSD already back then was better than a lot of your first time drivers, a lot of drunk people. Why not deploy the software early? And that's basically what they go on to say here, explaining that beta is is it's just called beta because it's not a, a finished product. Now, it says sharing. It says, when true self-driving is approved by regulators, it will mean that you will be able to summon your Tesla from pretty much anywhere. Once it picks you up, you'll be able to sleep, read, or do anything else en route to your destination. You will also be able to add your car to the Tesla shared fleet just by tapping a button on the Tesla phone app and have it generate income for you while you're at work or on vacation, significantly offsetting and at times potentially exceeding the monthly loan or lease cost. This dramatically lowers the true cost of ownership to the point where almost anyone could own a Tesla. Since most cars are only in use by their owner for 5 to 10% of the day, the fundamental economic utility of a true self-driving car is likely to be several times that of a car which is not. In cities where demand exceeds the supply of customer-owned Teslas, Tesla will operate its own fleet, ensuring you can always hail a ride from us no matter where you are. 
That's exciting. Not only is that exciting for individuals that currently have FSD and are a part of Tesla's autonomy ecosystem, but it's exciting for Tesla stock investors and really for the future of humanity. So I did want to share that with you. I think, uh, you know, just just hearing what Elon wrote eight years ago, it's kind of crazy, right, that these things are starting to come together now. So in terms of what comes next for Tesla stock, I already said this at the, at the beginning of this video, minus any kind of exogenous bad news out there in the markets or geopolitical tensions or any kind of black swan event, which I would say is probably unlikely or, or, or they're all black swan events are always unlikely. So odds are from now until Tesla earnings, markets are just going to be status quo, right? There's not going to be a huge reason for stocks to sell off unless, uh, you know, again, if, if Tesla cuts prices, that's obviously going to be a problem and Tesla stock would likely be negatively affected by that. But beyond any of that, beyond anything that we can actually sit here and speculate on whether or not it happens, I think you have from now until April 23rd before Tesla really rockets higher. And I think actually from now until then, Tesla stock could go higher. It could go quite a bit higher. But I'm expecting after earnings, you could see an even larger rally. And I do think we have some positive catalysts coming in this upcoming week that you should know about, one of which is the inflation numbers. So core CPI and headline CPI, basically across the board, they're expected to fall from last month, and rightfully so. I shared this chart in one of the last videos. This is looking at ISM services prices paid and overlaid that with the inflation numbers on a month-over-month -month basis. So you can see the inflation numbers are gray, and the blue line is your services uh, prices paid. And they pretty much track each other uh, perfectly, right? And what you just seen is services prices paid just fell to the lowest level you have seen since pre Rony Rona, right? Pre Rony Rona back in December of 2019, services prices paid was 59.8. Today, or for March, it was 53.4. So you're even, you know, dramatically lower than where you were pre Rona Rona. So what does that mean? Well, that likely means inflation is going to come in on the low side, and it might be a big um, upset to the bears in this upcoming week. Now, what areas of the markets benefit from inflation falling, the Fed really being able to start cutting rates? Obviously, interest rate sensitive names, small caps, stocks like Tesla benefit by far the most from that. And that's exactly... Uh, what I'm expecting for this upcoming week. I do think the CPI report is going to come in light on the soft side. If I'm wrong, then uh, I'll be pretty surprised given the ISM services prices paid data that we got. It tends to be a pretty reliable indicator of what CPI is going to do. And that could likely mean a, well, large rally in Tesla's stock. The sooner the Fed is able to cut rates, the sooner Tesla's at least auto business can start to get back on kind of a normal growth trajectory. And that could even by itself have a very positive impact to Tesla stock. But let's also point out the obvious. Tesla is highly shorted right now with 3.71% short interest of refloat, the highest that you have seen in about two years now. Uh, this is very short. You have $17.58 billion currently in short positions in Tesla. You had cost of borrow fees almost 10% on Friday, suggesting there were a lot of short positions taken out. I mean, just on Friday, there were 2.3 million shares that were borrowed, presumably to sell short. That, that's crazy. You have 102.79 million shares outstanding. So just simple math here would say, well, that are sold short, 102. 2.76 million shares sold short. Simple math would say if Tesla stock goes up $10, $10 every $10, short sellers are losing over a billion dollars. Just simple math, right? 102 million times 10 representing $10, right? You'd be losing over a billion dollars. If Tesla stock does start to rally here, if this upcoming week, if the inflation report is good, uh, then I think short sellers could be in for a world of hurt 
in Tesla stock even before we get into earnings. Now, the beautiful thing about Tesla earnings is I think the earnings are going to be positive for two parts. Number one, I think Tesla is going to take the approach of focusing more on profitability. After all, they have to fund the development of the Model 2, the robo taxi platform. They have to put a lot of R&D into that. At the same time, they're trying to develop Giga Mexico. If there's not a lot Tesla can do as far as boosting demand by cutting prices, which I, I don't think it boosts demand that much by cutting prices, there's nothing Tesla can do if rates are this high and it's unaffordable to get a car. Tesla's going to sell what they're going to sell. Cutting prices really just hurts Tesla more than it actually benefits Tesla. And I think Tesla has come to that conclusion, and that's why they recently incrementally raised prices, I think, to focus on profitability. So Tesla's earnings could be good on two, two parts. Tesla focusing more on profitability, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot more clarity on the Model 2, the the um delay of the model 2 as Reuters said and what's going on with that now here's my opinion it was never planned to have mass production at Texas for the model 2 i think it's pretty obvious tesla is going to develop model 2s they're going to get the manufacturing process um down for the model 2 for the robo taxi platform but i think they're only going to make so many model 2s in Texas and they're going to be for the robo taxi network, right? They're going to be for the ride hailing platform. And that timeline likely didn't change. But what changed is instead of mass market uh, model twos coming by second half of 2025, I think it's robo taxi model twos coming by second half of 2025. And then when Giga Texas is built, by then Tesla should have the manufacturing process down to a science for the model two. They can just apply what they've learned in Texas on the manufacturing process, put that into Giga Mexico and start mass production for people to purchase Model 2s from the Mexico plant, right? That's what I think happens. So you're not really getting a de delay of the Model 2. You're just getting RoboTaxis built first off the Model 2 RoboTaxi platform instead of commercialized mass market Model 2s, you know, uh, productions, right? So I think that'll be important. And I think Elon and the Tesla team providing a little bit of clarity on that um, it will be very beneficial to Tesla stock. The markets are always forward looking and they're, and, and they're always saying, hey, what's Tesla going to do next year and the year after that and the next year after that? And I think at this point when expectations are this low and you start to talk about the robo taxi network. That can be very positive for Tesla stock. So based simply on the charts, we want to get back above about 178 or so. You get above 178, things start to look a little bit better. If you get above about 188, that's where you get into larger upside. So if we break 188 in this upcoming week, that's where you're going to be looking at running into the 200s. You would essentially fill the gap that you've seen here on... What was this March 4th? And if you can get back above $200, that's where you're going to be testing your 100 day moving average at $210. And potentially you could even run well into the 200s, right? Uh, just shorts covering on short positions, I think, can take you up to about 200, 210 or so. If Tesla does have good earnings, that's where you can get back into the mid 200s, even to the higher end range of like 260, 270. And again, that's because the potential of the RoboTaxi network is just so damn large. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you found value out of this video. And last thing that I will say is I really don't think there is a lot of room for Tesla to fall here unless inflation comes in really bad, unless Tesla cuts prices or gives us some form of bad news. I, I really think it's going to be pretty consistently to the upside from here. Um, this really did change everything for Tesla stock. And you have to start modeling the RoboTaxi, especially when we get more clarity following earnings. And I think, you know, Elon's going to say second half of 2025. Nothing has changed with the initial, you know, projection for the start of Model 2 production. Instead, it's going to be RoboTaxi production. And mass market model two uh, production will start when really Giga Giga Mexico is done, and I think that'll be taken as highly positive news for Tesla stock 
investors. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekends. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, check out that link down below in the description of this video. Until then, you guys take care, enjoy your weekends, and I will see you in the next one.